morning to our extended Zendesk family and friends. Our customers, community, valued partners, those visiting the show for the first time to learn about Zendesk, silent lurkers, espresso junkies that joined on the promise of your espresso shot of CX, and each and every one of you for tuning in today as we all shift to the new realities of the world we live in. My name is Pralini Yudayan Kieki and I'm the Vice President of Marketing for EMEA and I will be your host for the series. If some of you can remember that classic book and one of my favorites that touched my soul, Tuesdays with Murray, in 2000 it was a New York Times bestseller. So really showing my age here. Anyway, it was a great book with so many simple but effective life lessons the author, Mitch Albon, had learned from his old college professor, Murray, who he refound later in life. Mitch visited Murray every Tuesdays, hence the name Tuesdays with Murray. I can't say you will learn your profound lessons in life by tuning in twice a week. However, like Mitch, who picked up something new every Tuesday and Thursday he met with Murray, we hope at Zendesk every Tuesday and Thursday, you'll be able to take away some insights, discover something new for yourself or something you can apply to your teams or your organization as we all navigate this new world of working from home. In today's episode, we want to help you adapt to the current times. So let's kick off by hearing a Q&A from our CEO and founder, Mikkel, on how Zendesk is helping our customers during this time. Hey everybody, so uh, I'm uh, back here for one of the favorite things is the Ask Me Anything session. Uh, and I received a bunch of questions through social media. First question here. What will Zendesk do to help uh, businesses through this crisis? And that's, of course, a very relevant, a very timely question. We have a lot of things underway. Not only do we have like a fast response teams to a lot of the customers that are currently experiencing incredibly high volumes or difficulties with uh, getting an organization to work together when everybody's working from home or dealing with all new types of issues that nobody thought about before. So we have a whole Tiger team working on that. We also have a CSR team reaching out to all kinds of organizations that could need our help, need our help with software, with uh, assistance uh, right now. And we have a lot more things planned. Uh, we try to be as responsive to the environment, to our customers and to what's going on currently. How do you manage coronavirus as part of Sendesk daily activities? I, I, I can't say that Sendesk, as most other companies, was super prepared for this situation. Having suddenly to send so many people home to work from home, uh, I think we've been we're trying to over communicate as good as possible with with the employees. Uh, try to explain everybody, be as transparent as possible, empower everybody to do what they believe is right right now. With a lot of the world moving to remote work, where does Sendesk shine for remote teams? Well, I think we've seen a lot of great use cases for using Zendesk for remote teams. Um, we've seen a lot of service desk being spun up so that organizations can help uh, their employees much better remotely so they can empower them and, and bring uh, relevant information out to them much more easily. Uh, we've also seen a lot of our tools for more uh, uh, company-wide collaboration help a lot of a lot of organizations uh, keeping up with cost of demand. Our collaboration add-on is very popular for empowering everybody in the organization to see what's going on and can also bring in external parties to help with uh, customer service. Mikkel is clearly enjoying both San Francisco sunshine and working from home there. If you want to hear more from Mikkel, visit our Zendesk related virtual event that is available on demand. So Mikkel touched on what Zendesk is doing to help our customers. I'm excited to invite on the show three colleagues that will go a little deeper into the areas Mikkel referenced. First, let's hear from Suzanne on helping you and your teams get the most from Zendesk. Hi, I'm Suzanne Hart, an account manager in the London office, and I've been at Zendesk over seven years. Before Zendesk, I was actually a customer service manager for 14 years, so now I'm really showing my age. And so I'd like to think I understand some of the challenges you face day to day when managing support teams, and particularly at the moment. One of the hardest things for me to adjust to has been not having my colleagues around me. I would imagine it's the same for your teams, as if you're a support agent, you are naturally a people person and so thrive on people contact. I don't think I fully realised how many times a day I would turn to a colleague and ask, what's X or how do I do this? 
and not having easy access to the people who know impacts the speed and quality of service to customers. Utilize the collaboration tools in Zendesk so your agents can access the answers and also the people who can help. We have great integrations to tools like Slack and Jira, as well as our own collaboration add-on, so your agents can bring in the right people and teams to help solve the issue. I love the Knowledge Capture app. This enables the agents to access help center content, including agent-only content, directly from the ticket and self-serve the answer. This is the virtual equivalent of me asking my colleague Joe, remind me, how do I activate the answer bot trial again? And talking of answer bot and self-serving, take the strain off your team by encouraging customers to self-serve. Understand what the trending questions are and the gaps in your help center knowledge by taking a free trial of content cues. As someone who only has a thin veneer of understanding of what machine learning is, I find it revolutionary that we can create a list for you of the articles you are missing based on your incoming tickets. You'll be able to prioritize these by the number of tickets received and you can also click into these tickets to understand exactly what the question is, the context it's being asked, and so can create a really relevant answer. Creating content on these top trending topics will reduce tickets and give your agents some breathing space to be able to concentrate on the conversations where they can add some real value. I know I said I love the Knowledge Capture app, and I do, but my favorite free Zendesk app is the time tracking app. And yes, I genuinely do have a ranking of my favorite apps on Zendesk, as that is what happens when you've worked somewhere for as long as I have, you become a nerd. Why is the time tracker my favorite? It's free. But more importantly, it will help you understand how long an agent spends to solve a ticket. This is different than the usual metrics of first response and resolution times because they are about the age of the ticket when an action happened. The time tracker tells you how long an agent physically spent in the ticket, so you can build reports to understand which tickets are a real time drain on the agents. You can focus on these tickets to see where you can speed this up, for example creating a macro or knowledge base article. Perhaps a lot of agent time is spent on clicking on ticket fields or assigning to different people, and a trigger or macro could do a lot of that for you. These reports will also show you which agents spend longer than others on the same types of tickets, and so highlights training needs for you. Zendesk automations are so useful yet underutilized. They can be used to send holding messages to new and open tickets if your response times are higher than normal, and can be used to bulk close tickets with a message. I know a lot of customers are doing this right now with cancellation requests, for example, and bulk closing the tickets with the cancellation policy details. This means the agent doesn't have to go in and do it manually, and instead they can be targeted on the tickets that require more than a stock answer. Myself and the other account managers, along with our customer success and support colleagues, are here to help you provide the best experience you can to your customers, but also your staff. Please do contact us for help and advice, and we give you free access to any of the tools I've mentioned, like Answerbot and Content Cues. Thanks, Suzanne, and thank you for always leading the way for you and your customers. Let's now hear about our Tech for Good program and how Zendesk is helping the community and non-for-profit organizations during this time. I'd like to welcome Erica, our comms guru in EMEA, to tell us a little bit about the program and share an example of how companies can benefit. Thanks, Bellini. I'm Erica Faltis, Group Manager of Communications for Europe, Middle East, and Africa here at Zendesk, and welcome to my home office here in London. There's no doubt it's been a bit of an adjustment, but I've been remembering to take lots of laps around the flat, make sure to keep my step count up along the way. Saying adjustment, though, it feels like an understatement. There is no doubt that we are in unprecedented times right now. But amidst all of the developments and the sad news, we've been hearing a lot of good stories, too with stories about volunteers and people who are rallying in their communities to support those in need during this period. At Zendesk, we wanted to do our part to help too. So in an effort to help support these organizations, Zendesk's Tech for Good program is donating free software and support to help nonprofits organize their volunteer and relief efforts in response to the impact of COVID-19. Already, Zendesk has donated hundreds of licenses to 20 organizations in collaboration with more than 40 implementation partners. And one example comes from Maynooth, Ireland, 
where a group of volunteers have joined with local supermarkets, pharmacies, and their local sports association to help older people or those in self-isolation during this difficult time. Here with me today, virtually, of course, is Nisha Okurul, a local counselor leading the effort. He also happens to be a customer success consultant at Zendesk and has helped Renew's home support use Zendesk to coordinate the response. Welcome, Nisha. And first of all, did I say your name correctly? You actually did, and you're probably one of the first people to, to get it straight off the bat. So, so well done there, and welcome to, to my home office, which is a little bit like a jungle, but uh, look, it, it, it keeps it fresh and keeps it green, you know? So tell us a little bit about this initiative in Maynooth and how it came together. Yeah, so Maynooth in Ireland is the only university town in Ireland, actually. Uh, so it's very cosmopolitan, but at the same time, it has that older community. Um, I'm really involved in the community there, obviously, and I've been reaching out to, to senior citizens groups, but a lot of local groups have been reaching out to me as well. So when we kind of looked at it and when I looked at it, um, I realized that there needed to be a concerted effort, a localized effort to manage the needs of people. Because while at the moment there is a demand from older members of, of the community, if we really want to stop the spread, what we need to do is people need to self-isolate more. And those people in self-isolation need to have their medications and their groceries, et cetera, all delivered to them. Oh, that's incredible what you're doing. And, and you also brought in Zendesk. So what made you decide to bring Zendesk in? Yeah, so I work in success within Zendesk. So I see so many different types uh, of, of uses of Zendesk. And, you know, obviously it was running through my head. How could we automate this a little bit better? How could we improve the workflows? Um, so Zendesk obviously sprung to mind. Um, and then I was just one evening, I was on Twitter. Uh, Mikkel, our CEO, put up this thing about tech for good. And then we got some internal comms. So I was like, okay, well, maybe we could actually use it. So I reached out then to uh, Sam Kind, who's running the Tech, tech for Good uh, program, and we got up and running in no time, um, also with the help uh, of a lot of amazing uh, volunteers within Zendesk as well. Brilliant. And so how has the response in the community been so far? So the response has been really, really positive. Um, so obviously we got the word out in social media, but also um, through those groups, such as the senior citizens to older members of the community. Um, but we have the local police force, which is the Gardaí Shikana. Uh, they're involved, we have the post office, uh, we have local sports clubs. So everybody really has kind of come in behind the group uh, and supporting it. And I suppose a testament of that as well is we have over 150 volunteers. Um, and a lot of these people, are out of work, uh, which just shows the level of community spirit that even though people have lost their jobs, they're willing to volunteer and help others. So um, it really is a good news story. And there's examples like this all across Ireland and all across Europe and indeed the globe. So um, I suppose it, it really does show communities coming together and, and becoming stronger. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Nisha. It's absolutely inspiring work that you and the team are doing and and just such a great example of what we're seeing around the world as people are coming together to support. Just one final question. If, if anybody in the community um, does need support or does want to volunteer, how can they get in touch? Yeah, the easiest thing is just to email the group help at gmail.com. That's maynooth, M-A-Y-N-O-O-T-H, communityhelp at gmail.com and we will get you set up. Great, thank you so much, Nisha, for joining us. If you're affiliated with a nonprofit organization like Nisha's and looking for help in managing volunteer, relief efforts, and more in your community, then please reach out. You can share your details in the form at goto.zendesk.com slash techforgood. Thanks, Erica. We obviously all need to find a new way to work. This is difficult for all teams and particularly hard for support teams when traditionally support teams have been office space. Let's watch a quick video clip on the perceptions of working from home, and then let's hear from Anna Keating, our Director of Customer Support for EMEA, where she'll go through some best practices and tips for managing remote support teams. Excuse me, what are you doing? Just working. How's it going to customer service? Actually having a little trouble with the technology here. <laughs> I'm Dimi, a Director of Customer Advocacy, and I'm here today to talk how to best manage a virtual team. First of all, agree on the work systems that work best for you and your team. Everyone has different work styles, and in a virtual team environment, this is not different. 
Your team may develop their own processes and procedures that don't necessarily suit with the way other team members are working. So the best way is to have a really a documented, standardized way of working that you are constantly optimizing. Also, communication is key. Besides email and messaging programs like Slack, which are great, it's also a good idea to set up regular check-ins via video conferencing like Skype, FaceTime and Zoom. Um, set up uh, regular meetings. What works really, really well for my team and I is to have a morning stand-up meeting. And this allows us to connect and get a sense how we are progressing against our um, goals, um, discuss any roadblocks and, and perhaps where a helping hand from other team members are needed. And also talk a little bit about what our daily priorities um, are. Outside that daily send up, we also have uh, regular team meetings. Um, these meetings really have an agenda that um, involves all team members. We really want everybody to contribute. In addition, we allocate time to meet privately each team member, which is a good opportunity for them to share updates. Um, also, if they wish to talk about sensitive topics and for you as a leader to provide coaching. Um, scheduling uh, regular meetings uh, with a team, I find that provides them with a sense of stability, something they are used to and familiar with. It reduces um, stress, I find, and also puts the team at ease. Uh, video calls are one of the best ways to maximize efficiency because they recreate the routine office feeling remote teams normally miss out on. Also, have clear and detailed deliverables. It's important to have regular checkups with your team to keep track how they're progressing against agreed goals and targets. Based on my experience, it is a good practice to provide a detailed description um, of the tasks with as much examples as you can give of what you expect to see and give the team the freedom to execute those. Um, in addition, professional attire and a distraction-free working environment should be recommended as part of the working from home culture. However, it's important to allow a degree of flexibility when managing remote employees. And finally, be patient, show empathy and take this opportunity to get to know your teams better. Do you expect to take a few weeks for people to get into the norm and, and normalize their productivity? We've heard how to get the most out of Zendesk, the Zendesk Tech for Good program and some best practice tips for managing your remote teams. I wanted to share a quick video from our customer, Grégoire Lacroix from Ebepair, and hear his story on why he chose to partner with Zendesk. Hello, I'm Grégoire Leclerc, and the Managing Deputy Director from UBP, a French company specialized in accounting software. The first success is to, to keep the client, to keep the customer, years and years. And for us, the support, the service, is the first level of satisfaction, and is certainly the first level of loyalty. In the past, uh, EBP was equipped just with Outlook and uh, we had a, a big problem, a big challenge to, to receive emails from our clients, from our customers. It was a disaster in fact and uh, the customer satisfaction was absolutely bad. We are really to, to change, we are really to be agile, we are really to change our organization. So we have a vision of which kind of customer experience our customer would like. We discovered Zendesk, we chose Zendesk, we implemented Zendesk in two weeks. It's a product which was intuitive, which was productive, and which can give us quality monitoring and customer satisfaction. It's a transformation just by the, t by the tool, in fact. And so it's already a, a big change in our vision and in our management teams. People just like it, and it was uh, super, super cool. If you'd like to learn more about any of the topics we have covered today, and as Mitch Elvin had learned, no matter how simple or profound, feel free to click on the links below. 
visit the Zendesk blog, and if you missed it, watch Zendesk Relator, where you can discover content on tools and best practices to help you. One thing we are offering our customers and audience is a six month complimentary remote support bundle to help you and your teams keep up with the changing customer demands due to the side effects of COVID-19. The support bundle will include collaboration add-on, explore professional and credits for free training. Visit Zendesk.com or speak to one of our friendly Zendesk team members to learn more. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Tune in next Tuesday to hear how different companies have pivoted their business models on shifting demand. Take care, be safe, be healthy, and be kind to your colleagues and loved ones.